This video will show you how to graph a linear inequality. Graphing a linear inequality is just like graphing a line, but then you're going to have to do one little thing extra after you've graphed the line. So pretend for a second, instead of just saying y less than or equal to, just pretend you have y equals. This is in slope-intercept form. All you need to be able to graph the line is the slope and the y-intercept. The y-intercept is this value back here, and the slope is right here. From there, I can graph the line. The y-intercept is 1, and it is a y-intercept, means you're going to plot it on the y-axis. It has a slope of 1 half. Slope is rise over the run, so from here I'm going up 1 to the right 2. I'm going to count this out a couple times just so that the line looks a little bit neater. Up 1 over 2, put a dot. Up 1 over 2. Those dots are going to make my line. So I draw my line, and that is the line y equals. But what I have to think about is that this is an inequality. This says I need to graph y less than or equal to this. Now you have to decide about shading. You're either going to shade above the line or below the line. Now one way to do this is to always pick a test point and decide. But the easier way is if this is in slope-intercept form with y on the left, it's just a matter of less than tells you to shade below. So your line will look like this. So that's your linear inequality. All you had to do was graph your line and then decide how to shade. So graphing a linear inequality is just a matter of graphing the line and then deciding how to shade. But once you've even used the rule that less than tells you to shade under, it's a good idea to check by plugging any ordered pair that is in the shaded region into the original inequality. If 0, 0 is in your shaded region, then 0, 0 is a great ordered pair to pick because the arithmetic is easy. So 0, 0 is in my shaded region. I'm going to put 0 in for that x and 0 in for that y. That's my arithmetic down here, and check and see if it works. 1 half times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Is 0 less than or equal to 1? Yes, it is. That tells me I have shaded the correct region. So let's see another one y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. There's your y-intercept, there's your slope. You might want to give that a denominator of 1 to make it easier to count the slope. So a y-intercept of 3 gives me a dot on the y-axis right there. A slope of negative 2 over 1. Notice I let the negative go with the top because I would like the bottom to be positive so that I can count my slope this way. Negative 2 over 1 is down 2 to the right 1. I don't have to think about, hmm, left or right. I'm always going right because I'm always letting the negative go with the top. So down 2 to the right 1. Down 2 to the right 1. Let's get the line. And that's not a great job. I have to slide this around a little bit. So there's my line. And then I have to decide about the shading. This says greater than or equal to, so above the line. And this is what it looks like a little more neatly. We need to check. Now notice, 0, 0 is not in the shaded region. So I need to pick another value that is in my shaded region. Be sure you pick something that's clearly in the region. Don't pick something that's close to the line in case you were just a little bit off when you drew your line. So what I chose here is the point 2, 2. I mean, I could have picked anything in this region. I just picked 2, 2 because it was pretty easy arithmetic. So I put 2 in for that x. I put 2 in for the y. And let's see what happens. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 3. These are different signs. Keep the sign of the larger and subtract. Is 2 greater than or equal to negative 1? Yes, we have shaded the correct way. Now, I haven't really told you the entire story. The first two were less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Notice this sign is just less than. That's going to lead to another little change we have to make in the line. But we still start the same way, y-intercept and slope. y-intercept of negative 2, our first dot right there, a slope of negative 2 thirds down 2 to the right 3 because I'm letting the negative go with the top only, down 2 to the right 3, and then we'll draw the line, see if I can get that in there fairly decently. It missed the dots a little bit on there, but it's easier for you guys with a pencil, but you'll see it on the next screen a little bit better. But here's the thing. Yes, I can shade this. It is less than, so I know it's this, but it's not less than or equal to. 
so that I have to make an adjustment on this line. And what I do is similar to what we did with just plain old inequalities like x less than 4. Remember x less than 4 using either an open circle or a parentheses? On an inequality like this, we take the line and we make it dotted. The way I have to do this on this video, I can't actually start with a dotted line. I have to do the solid line and then make the dotted. What you can do is when you have your dots for the line, just make a dotted line right there. So this is what it looks like a bit more neatly. So because it's only less than, not less than or equal to, this line has to be dotted. Now let's check. In the checking here, 0, 0 is not in my region, so I didn't pick 0, 0. But the point I picked is down here, and that's the point 0, negative 3. So 0 in for x, negative 3 in for y. Check out the arithmetic negative two-thirds times negative three, and the reason I picked negative three is because I can do a little bit of canceling here. First off, a negative times a negative is a positive. My threes will cancel out, and this is going to give me two minus two, which is zero. Is negative three less than zero? Yes, it is, so it does check. Okay, one more of this type, y greater than three-fourths x minus two. So y-intercept and slope right there, a y-intercept of negative two, first dot. A slope of 3 fourths is up 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, up 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4. And I run out of room. You could fake it and put a dot there. Two dots really is enough. I just like to have three dots out to be neat. Now, what you guys can do, it won't look very neat on this video, is realize, oh, it's just greater than. So instead of drawing in the nice solid line and going back and dotting it, you can just pencil in the dot, and this is hard for me to do, but you get the idea. Then you still have to decide on the shading. It is greater than, so your shading is going to be above. So this is how it looks a little more neatly. There's my dotted line, my shaded above. This time 0, 0 is in my shaded region, so when I do my checking, I'm going to use 0, 0. So 3 fourths times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Is 0 greater than negative 2? Yes, it is. So the bottom line on this inequality stuff is just deciding two things. What type of line are you going to use? Is it going to be solid or dotted? And where are you going to shade? Are you going to shade above or below the line? So you can stop the video and write all this down. If it's plain old less or plain old greater, that's when you get the dotted line. If it's less than or equal to, or it's greater than or equal to, that's your solid line. Then the other thing is how you're going to shade. If it's greater or greater than or equal to, you shade above the line. Less or less than or equal to, shade below the lines. One last thing. Sometimes the equation is not in slope-intercept form, which means we must put it in slope-intercept form, which means solve for y. To solve this for y, we'll start by just subtracting 3x from both sides, which gives us negative 4y, less than or equal to negative 3x minus 8. Solve by dividing both sides by negative 4. Because you have divided by a negative, don't forget to change your inequality sign around. And this becomes positive 3 fourths x plus 2. Now we are in the proper form, easy to graph from here. It has a y-intercept of 2, a slope of 3 fourths, up 1, 2, 3, over to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to draw a solid line and shade above because it's greater. We're using that sign, shade above, to check. 0, 0 is not in my shaded region, so I need to pick something up here in the green region. I happen to pick a point up in here. So we're going to plug that point, which is 0, 4, into the original equation. So 0 goes in for x, 4 goes in for y, and here's the arithmetic here. 3 times 0 is 0, 4 times 4 is 16. 0 minus 16 is negative 16, which is less than or equal to negative 8. So that's your whole story on graphing linear inequalities. Graph your line, decide if it's a solid or dotted line, and then shade it. If the inequality is not in slope-intercept form, then the first thing you need to do is put it in slope-intercept form.